Is he is he just gonna go DTs <laughs> and get a, a pylon in the main? That's that's what you do. You proxy inside the very main. The probe still hasn't still discounted. unseen. There's oh the pylon. Oh my god! That's a little bit early right. though. Oh there it is. God. It's actually in the main. What the? F okay, I can't say that on air, but. <laughs> <laughs> The Unseen Dark Shrine is, in fact, the deadliest. This is the best way to Watch get to Solar's Watch him build a gateway head. in the main, too, for faster warp ins. That's how you do it. He hasn't even seen the natural. What a terrible uh, time to not scout and see that there's no base. Overlord Speed is about to finish here, but, I mean, let's be real. I think it's a little bit too late. That Dark Shrine is about halfway done. He's threatening <laughs> with a Stalker. <laughs> I think Solar's beginning to read a little bit into this, like, okay, what's going on? Okay, now he knows. Da, da, all of a He's sudden. Like, oh, wait, no, I had a Nexus. <laughs> oh, my God. So, he, yeah, he, if, he, if that had been down, like, a uh -oh. second early, he's going to get into the main. One Stalker. Will he kill it in time? No. The Zergling gets a full scout and sees everything that isn't there. Immediately, Spore Crawlers start going down. The Dark Shrine, it finishes just seconds <laughs> too slowly. In the main. <laughs> All right, here we go. Spores are done. Guys, get your Twitch clip buttons ready. We're about to see either the life or death of uh, a Zerg or Protoss player. Also, watch Solar's face. He could snipe the Spore. He could. That's, oh my God. that's the play. Yeah, he can snipe the Spore. All the queens are at the natural oh here. Oh, my God. He doesn't know there's a pylon at his back door. Oh, my God. This is so genius. Dear you sexy man! What a build! The spore goes down. Another one will never be built. And there he goes. <laughs> Look at that solar face. He knows. He knows it is just too late. His main in, what did I say earlier? Shatters? That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's in shatters. Everything will die. And oh, he's going to cancel the spore at the third. Yeah, there's no spore over here. He <laughs> needs to surround it. He does surround it. He's going to pull away. He's going to give it up. He's sacking his third. He's going to try to run it in. Can he surround this board? No, he's not protecting this board crawler. It's GG. What? Fleet Beacon. Okay, it's it's the uh, it's the Rotterdam build. <laughs> Rodney build makes a second appearance here. Yep. Classic did it in the finals versus Dream. <laughs> and he's going to do it again here on this map. But he's going to have very few units to deal with the Widow Mines, and he's not going to have detection except for the Oracle. And I think he knows at this point it's a proxy factory, because where else would it be? He's on one base, there's nothing hidden. He's checking all over the map for it right now, checking for hidden bases. And Classic is just really misreading things today. Checking for hidden oh, bases over this. this. Very late, Paul is going to cost him. How much? Uh, just one. one. Yeah, really good pull. Great split there towards the end. He doesn't have enough energy for... Uh, Detection yet, but I think he will shortly. Here's the first Tempest. Okay, by the way, at the same time. See how much damage this gets on. He's actually very aggressively in the base right now. There's very few Marines that are actually out of position. Flash is just going to go for the push. Yeah. And you know what? I think this is actually the right choice. He can't defend that Tempest with only Marines. No way. You can just micro there behind the mineral line. The Tempest, even though it has that huge range and it is going to slowly poke here, uh, it's pretty slow about killing all these SCVs. I actually think you should pull SCVs with this attack. What is he going to do with the extra money with no extra production? He has added no production. He has no extra CC. Ooh. Oh, he cannot be losing these Widow Mines like this. It's going to hurt the push quite substantially. All right, bunkers need to be made. That's where he needs to put his money right now. No Mother Support right now. Stim is almost finished as well. This is a crazy game. We got a Viking on the way. He has pulled a lot of SCVs. Oh, the Oracle goes down. Probes are fighting Marines. Does he have enough? I don't think so. This more is way too many Marines. Yeah, more reinforcements coming. The Zealots going to get targeted down. Great micro here from Flash. And perfect positioning against the probes in that location there in between uh -oh. the gateways. Look at the pylon. It's going to go down here really soon. He gets two more warp ins, but still, is that going to be luck enough? Look at how many SCVs are even here to tank. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out like mathematically if there's a way for Classic to win this with the Tempest that he has. He only has two. I don't think so. And you can't kill the buildings fast enough. Yeah, like... Flash should theoretically be able to kill the buildings fast enough. Um, okay, it's all about the micro right now. This game is still winnable for both players. Yeah, you got to be really careful with how many all times these, you stem too. All these Marines are in the red. Look at this. He's going to pick them up one by one. He's going to pick them up one by one. Stims again. Stalker goes down. He has enough for one more Oracle. He's making it right now. Oh, my God. Is Classic going to win this game? I think he certainly might. 
Right now, the workers, 11 probes versus 20 SCVs. Two Vikings, not enough to kill two Tempests. There are 14 Marines. This is going to be all about the micro. Most of his oh, Marines oh. cannot stim. And actually, several of them are dying to probes right now. Classic's base is being revealed, but he has so many buildings on the map. Killing them in time is going to be difficult. So Ooh. Flash is trying to kill. He's trying to go back and mine more to make more units. Yeah, but look at this. Oracle intercepts all the SUVs coming back. He's going to get so many of these. All right, three Marines now being produced at a time. And now, right now, he might be re he might be thinking that he should have not used that Oracle this way. He might be wanted to use the fight Marines. But the Vikings are coming back on the hunt. Killing the Vikings is a, the top priority right now for those uh, for those Tempests. Being killed the Vikings, the Oracle is going to be his best tool at killing these Marines. This is crazy we're watching right now. <laughs> Insane game. Now Classic has one probe left. Not enough money to make anything. So the buildings you see are the buildings you're going to get for the rest of this game for him. Flash on the other hand can still mine. There's his last probe. All right, he's lifted here. Keep in mind, Flash doesn't know how many minerals Classic has at this point in time. Yeah, that's why he's trying to target this probe down. Well, decides not to. He also doesn't know how many probes are on the map. He's just trying to make as many units as possible and kill all the buildings. Of course, Classic is being revealed right now. He doesn't have a Nexus. Flash is slowly picking out the buildings in the main, but it looks like the Oracle's going back to try to deal with those Marines. I feel like the... the, the I think Classic has this game won no matter what. He's going to kill these Marines. But the, the only thing he should be concerned about is the Marines coming out. He's more concerned about killing the Orbital. Uh, but actually, a few more Marines do come out. But those Tempests still have full shields. I can't imagine a world where Flash wins this game anymore. Oh, man. He just barely misses that Oracle. That's huge. He was all by himself. He's trying to build that Marine count now. Marine count currently at six. And they're all joined up. Six Marines cannot kill two Tempests, but with Vikings and Stim. It's making the fight even. Yeah, I think the only choice here for Flash is to try to target down all the buildings. In These fact, Tempests are going to be very slow. I think Flash should have landed and dropped Mules. Like, flying the sea orbital is keeping the Tempest away from his base. Okay, Vikings are landed here, which is kind of a comical situation. Because now this Oracle is going to kill two Marines. But he's going to lose it. will it. go down, yep. And that is huge. All right, so on the map right now, six Marines and two Vikings versus two Tempest and a probe. The Marines have stimmed to rush and kill the buildings. So they're, you know, not at full health either, mind you. He's now going to kill the uh -huh. pylon powering this fleet beacon. But there are three buildings on the other side of the map still. Actually, there are four. Two assimilators, a half health gateway with half shields, mind you, and a cybernetics core. This but the Vikings are over here. He's going to force the Tempest to make a very... I don't know. He's got to make a, a really good decision right now. He needs to come back and defend his buildings. Oh, my God. Okay. He has to come back. Yeah. And I think he should be able to. He should be able to defend this, no problem. The Marines are coming across the map now. He has to just leave with these. Uh... There's, I don't think two Marines and two, uh, six Marines and two Vikings could kill the Tempest. I just don't think it's possible. The Tempest has. Unless the Tempests are just sitting under there. Even so, maybe even not. Tempest has 450 hit points. I mean, 300 plus 150 shields. All he has to do is just kite, basically. It has the biggest range of any unit in the game. You know, I think he definitely still has a chance here. Yeah. He's going to try to keep one Tempest at home. And now Flash has grouped up his units. Maybe try to go for a snipe on one of the Tempests. Looks like he's he's edging towards that main base. Yeah. I think he's going to try to snipe a Tempest. The problem is he has to fight the Tempest when it's not over the, the lava. Tempest is coming back. Okay. Okay, he moves away, though. Oh, I my God. I spotted the units. That and was so close. The second Tempest is coming, though. They might get sandwiched here. These units. Quite possibly. It has oh. been spotted. It's been spotted. He stems. He goes for it. This is his moment. Will he take it? And now while he targets the Marines, it doesn't do enough single target damage. He targets the Viking. The Marines live. Is he going to get that Tempest? He is going to kill the Tempest. And the Viking lives. That is so important right now. Now, I don't think that I don't think that Classic can win this game. This game might be decided by a stalemate now. Because he can't. He If he just camps and defends his buildings, Flash can never kill him, I don't think, with this unit composition anymore. Yeah, but I, I don't think. Now Classic can't kill him. <laughs> I think it's a stalemate. It will be a tie. This, this. I think you're right. I think it has to be. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe that. He was so indecisive with his Tempest. If he targets the, the Marines, they do so much damage, but then he loses the DPS on the Vikings, so he targeted some of the Marines and switched to the Viking at the last second, and that was what allowed him to kill the Tempest. Flash just simply needs to keep his units 
are ready for the, the for the run in and avoid the tempest. The the way that Classic wins this game now is by killing these Marines. Like if he yeah. actually ends up killing the Marines one by one, then he can win the game. And he can. And I, I think he'll still stay in this game. He's gonna break down those back rocks. That means that he knows the one location that Flash can attack is this ramp. And I think he's actually wanting the stalemate here. I think he wants the stalemate. He's just gonna camp this, and Flash is not gonna leave. Flash is gonna see the Tempest is there with one of his buildings, and then he's never going to attack. And then that's when this is gonna become a stalemate. If these two players make the perfect decisions, that should be what happens in the next few moments. I don't know. I, I think Classic can maybe target down the Marines. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and actually win the fight. That one Viking also is on like zero health. But the thing is, he has to find them. And the Marines can't stim. They don't have any health to stim. Yeah. So he so can't. He's just going to sit there and wait. And, that, and Flash is never, ever, ever going to go there. He's never going to go there. And. If he, if he goes to kill the buildings to the north with that Tempest, Flash will be able to kill his buildings as long as Flash doesn't lose his unit. So he's just going to run away. He has the Watchtower and he has buildings enough to spot this. This game is a stalemate. It's already decided. Both players have already accepted it. And a referee is going to have to go in there soon to, to, to you know, ask them if they are going to accept the stalemate because this game is not going to end. Oh, this game is so fun, though. I, I yeah, love this, this game so insane, much. This is insane, man. Classic is going to come out here and poke at the buildings that are coming in to scout. Yeah, he just wants to make sure the Tempest is here. Yeah. Oh my god, is Flash going to attack? It's not, it's not, it's not a winnable situation if he attacks. No, I, I highly doubt he will. I think he knows at this point. I would type PP right now if I were either of these players. I think they're, they definitely know that. I don't know if that's allowed, if you can pause to ask for a stalemate. That might be against the rules, but um, the Observer is the one who normally yeah. does that. This game should certainly be a stalemate, though. Oh, oh my god, one other thing to consider, though. Well, if he if he tried to stay in the middle of the map, I eventually, like, take one shot, then already immediately head back, he might be able to trap those units in there. He could try to bait the units to go in there, and then, and then uh, as soon as he sees they're there, run back and kill them, because if Flash decides to go in there and he does a little bit of damage, and the shields, the shields will regenerate, right? But if Classic is like doing a little bit of damage to his buildings, those shields will never regenerate. So eventually, the Terran buildings will run out of health. They repeatedly did this, P but they P would. P okay, there it is. Game post. Yeah. Stalemate. As long as, as long as either player just defends, you know that's that's the way these guys win by defending, and that's why we're gonna have this stalemate situation. Um, I don't think either player is gonna say no. I think I can win this game. Oh, uh, and we have a a cyclone on the way, which is kind of cool. Well, Gumio's popularized this a lot, mm. getting that one Cyclone out and then trying to do just a little bit of damage, trying to poke some holes yeah. in him. Yeah, and uh, there have been some Terrans uh, playing around with dropping four Marines in a Cyclone. Because, you know, a lot of times you're using Stalkers for defense and stuff, and the speed with which a Cyclone kills Stalkers and even Pylons and buildings and stuff is pretty crazy. So it could be something like that. But anyways, DT Shrine. Oh, oh God, my please, God. Oh, please, oh, please. And this DT Shrine is in such a location that not likely to be picked off. You know, he just kind of got, like, maybe slightly unlucky with the side he built the DT Shrine on the last game. So, you know, the pylon got picked off so quickly. I mean, basically, Nightmare sitting there with a few candles lit and a photo of Zeratul. <laughs> and he's taking his beer out and he pours it out and says, this one's from my dead homie. Yeah. He'll never forgive. Never Artanis. forget. That's right. Okay. So here comes in the drop. And without that pylon being ready, like, he can just kill it very easily. Yeah. Kind of uh, cool to see Gum Gumiho always someone kind of leading the meta of Terran as well. Has his own But this is like away. this is like a little Gumiho build. Yeah. He was like, all right, I get this unit with this unit and this unit, and I come over here, and then I put it there, and I hit like this, and then I get away. Six probes, and he got a pylon? That's fantastic. That is better than a Widowmine draw. Yeah. So that did actually very, very well for Gumiho. Uh, definitely has to be happy about that, for sure. Now, the Warp Prism is coming out and uh, does have the DT Shrine finishing. Three DTs in the way. Please start DT Blink. Please start DT Blink. Please oh, start Oh, he's going to do it. I'm so sure he's going to do it. And here's... I actually think DT Blink is eventually going to be used. The game is in, uh, you know, a new state, so that's, like, so much multitasking. A lot of people are skipping it right now, but there it is. It's on the way. I, I do want to say this one thing, because so many people are like, oh, it isn't good enough. I think it is going to be really good one day. Like, 
people just have to really be on top of the flow of the meta before it gets used. Because if your blink saves one DT, it's already worth the cost. Dude, by the way, he got this uh, expansion. It's not mining. He's going to go get that SCV right next to the command center. Charge on the way. Same build here from Nightmare. Please, Nightmare, make this real. Make this a great build. He's coming up. Is he going to run for it? Good scan on the center of the DT. Takes that out. Sacrifices himself for the depot. With Blink, you yeah. can do things like go up, swipe their army as soon as they scan, Blink out. The Blink has a very slow cooldown, and but still. I think the way this works is he wants to Blink in, do some damage, Blink out, then make them into Archons and they're oh all Bruise. Oh, my God. And then just come in for the kill. This is so cool. What am I or watching? Maybe what am I watching? Oh. What am I watching? Well, that was anticlimactic. He's going to make a few more units over here. A lot of Zealots and DTs. This is so crazy. I, I think he actually blinks behind it. This is everything. so crazy. Look, here we go. I don't know. Okay, he blinks on top of oh. everything. Oh, my God. He charges in, and the blink DTs oh. smashing through. That's so cool. Dude, he's actually doing it. This okay. is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I didn't even seen. think you'd use him like that, but yeah, you just blink on top of the army, and then that damage is dealt so fast. Oh my god, yeah, no, they deal a ton of single target damage. Yeah. And he is on top of everything. The second prism out here being hunted down by a Viking. He might not be able to reinforce, but G -G. it doesn't matter. Whoa! You know, in a previous series, he tried to go for a mothership rush. Uh, yeah. It really did not work out for him. Mm -hmm. But do you think he goes for something similarly crazy, or is it just going to be straight up into, like, Void Ray Carrier? Interesting. Yeah, there it is. Starts it right up. Fires up the biggest, heaviest, most expensive hero unit in the game uh, that does have a particular meme attached to it. Well, the funny part about this is that the three bases are almost easier to turtle than the two bases in a weird way, because... Once you secure that, like, pocket third, you can no longer get blinked on into the main base. But mm. until that happens, you are almost just as spread out on two bases as three, which is, like, super weird. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the army wasn't rotating very quickly at all from King Cobra. But now with that mothership out, he's, uh, he, he's more than locked down on these two bases. And as long as he doesn't, you know, let the mothership get caught out of position. Ooh, stasis oh, Stasis Ward. Careful. Oh, okay. Oh, Three oh actually, ah, that's not so bad. Their blink is off cooldown, so they can blink away uh, when the Stasis Ward expires. That could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it's a lot of DPS that will come out of these Immortals, however, so... Yet still, he might lose one or two in this process. Oh, he actually moves a little bit away from the Stalkers, which allows them to blink left if they want to. Oh, they won't be paid attention to. Now they blink to the left. Yeah, these stasis wards have been so clutch. He's actually just used the oracles pretty much exclusively for them, and they have paid pretty huge dividends. Only six probes going down. Uh, I mean, King Cobra is very far behind in economy, but Shadow's army quality is quite bad. And he sees and realizes, okay, I'm not going to break my opponent easily. Maybe I still can, but I need to have a transition ready to go. And he's getting that plus oh. one weapons. Who tries to go for the disruptor? Not able to get it. Oh, the huge zealot run by into the natural though. That it's might massive. actually is their battery overcharge even available? No, it wasn't. He could have clicked the nexus. I think he could have killed the nexus right there. Instead, mm. he is probably just going to lose all these zealots for not a whole lot of gain, to be honest. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, he he did kill a lot of workers, right? So he he nearly has double the amount of workers that his opponent has, and he has to continue to look for this kind of trade because if we look at the income tab, which has been our favorite tab today. We see that Shadown can afford to trade nearly t twice as bad as uh, King Cobra can and still be in, in decent shape to continue on with the game, especially accounting for the fact that King Cobra will run out of, of minerals in the main and natural eventually, whereas Shadown has complete map control. So I liked the, the sellout run by. I'm not sure that he would have killed Nexus. Maybe so, and, and that would have been a great price to take. But, uh, but certainly he could have killed a, a few probes, and, and I think, you know, going for the short kills is not the worst thing in the world. It's a very yeah. uncommon approach as well from Shadown here. This is starting to get scary though, I feel like. This is actually... And I actually think seven Stargates is too much. Like, I think... I think you... Man, like, he, he can't even come close to affording to use all of them. Uh, even... Not yet. Not yet. Like, maybe, maybe he gets to a point where he builds up a massive bank. He needs a lot more gas in the bank for it though. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I was wondering if he was maybe going to try and go Phoenixes with like Anion Pulse Crystals. We actually do have the Anion Pulse Crystals upgrade coming in from King Cobra here. 
So wait, was he anticipating the same move? Was he thinking Void Rays? What? I, I, he I, just bought at the Stargates with a Hallucinated yeah. Phoenix, so he, he knows what's going on. Now the Oracles are going to confirm as well. So he wants to switch into his own Phoenix to contend with the Tempests. And, uh, you know, Phoenix are pretty good if they can dive on top of those. Yeah. Yeah, they actually trade uh, cost efficiently and then some against Tempests. Mm -hmm. Like, they are actually very good against them. So, yeah, no, you, yeah, you've got to be right. That's definitely what it is. Uh, we do have the plus one air armor and plus one shields finishing up here for uh, Shadown, but he is going to be behind in the attack upgrade timing by a decent little bit. I, I think, though, with oh. the other upgrades, that'll be enough. We do see the disruptors. Ooh, they're gonna, well, the wow. Stasis. Wow, the stasis locks that disruptor in. Okay, it will wiggle its way out. Uh, that is very funny. The stasis just saved like seven zealots. Yeah, and Shadown has done a good job of kind of just trading his army for the time being, right? And King Cobra is approaching the the kind of like his max where he is going to have like an army that in on paper should be unstoppable and it probably very well will be. It's a question of if Shadown, Shadown's basically playing Zerg at this point, right? And looking for a remax victory more likely than not. And uh, he should be able to trade well enough with this Tempests, I think, on the first pass that if he has a big enough bank, he, he can maybe end up turning the tides here but his army from King Cobra is so scary and this is just you know this is we were talking about Geralt doing the same thing over and over this is what King Cobra does and he yeah. is very good at it is there even an oracle for Shadown yeah there is two yeah yeah he uh he built those toward or at least he built one towards the end uh I don't know how long ago he built the other one probably built two just to be on the safe side this is kind of nice gets a couple of free static D pickoffs uh now his goal Shadown's goal right now is to tag that mothership and just instantly uh -oh. take it out before the fight. But here come these phoenixes. Recall. There's so many of them. And yeah, he's going to force an instant recall. Disruptor shot does land. And now we've got a tricky situation because yeah. these Tempests are going to struggle against the phoenixes. Look at them. Look at them going down. They get one-shotted, basically, by this fleet of phoenixes. Zealots will find themselves fighting against these immortals. I actually really like that he trades out the immortals here to yeah. add on more and more phoenixes. I think that's a great decision. Yeah, that was, is... that was his safety mechanism early on, but now he recognizes that the only threat is the air in itself, and now King Cobra is out and in full force here. So let's see what Shadown can do to, to try to stop this. He is still making just Tempests. Yeah, and that's, that's not going to cut it. I think King Cobra think so. is going to just run this army down. It can't even recall now. Look at how quickly the Tempests go down to this huge number of phoenixes. The phoenix do have plus three weapons. Uh, they are fighting against the plus two air armor and the plus one shields. The carriers are adding on so much DPS as well. The stalkers cannot blink it forward on top of oh, the disruptors are going to come on in. Mothership does get taken down, but this is still looking very difficult here for Shadown. I okay, think good. King Cobra's maybe done it. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Shadown is doing a good job of at least target firing the carriers, and, and they are kind of getting one-shotted for the time being. Now the Phoenix find a good angle onto the rest of the Tempest, and the Tempest want to try to re-engage onto the carrier. So King Cobra doing a great job of actually disengaging, even though it looked pretty good for him. He will get rid of the Tempest before the Tempest get rid of the carriers. And now Shadown mostly working with Stalkers, and production still mostly just air upgrades for the side of the French. And not much else to speak of. He is pretty far behind in supply right now. Oh! Not sure about that recall. Oh, he saves the carrier just barely. Look at the resources lost right now. It is more than double in favor. 12,000 to over 26,000 for his opponent. And, I mean, the resources mine is fantastic. Jeez, but so now much. these oracles, they come back in. He runs out of energy on that shield battery. Another six kills. Yeah, he, that's, I, I, that's 28 between those two oracles all day. So they have done... A lot of work here. Never mind the stasis traps, which were wildly successful. It's those same two oracles the entire time. Oh, and look at those Phoenix lists right there. He kills off like six of those stalkers towards the tail end. Blink not going to be able to save him for all the stalkers. Mothership being rebuilt. More and more carriers being added on. Shadown is down in workers right now. I, King Cobra's just chilling on four bases. And again, the oracles dart on in. They have been worth their weight in gold. Yeah, I mean, this is not looking good for Shadown at all. Now the Phoenix come in here. They can definitely do something against these Stalkers, and I'm not sure that Stalkers are going to cut it, but Shadown seems to be running out of ideas. A Templar, a, a Templar Archives goes down. 
which is good, I guess, Archons and or even High Templars for feedback, though that is pretty difficult to pull off because the Phoenix are going to encroach so fast that you're going to get a couple of feedbacks off, probably not even kill those units, and then your Templars die instantly. So probably yeah. Archons against how clumped up these Phoenix are going to be. I think the Archons actually would have been great with the Tempests earlier when it was yeah. a... Uh, a different situation when in, in that case you kind of use them as uh, archons to guard carriers like it's pvz mm -hmm. you're using them to guard them against the uh the corruptors diving on top oh, oh my shit. god look at those lifts there's so many lifts and man oh man King oh! cobra drops it in the wombo combo for the kill steph curry and steven pippen oh my goodness that was incredible <laughs> absolutely <laughs> nutty engagement right there from king cobra comes in the man is like 32 years old and just absolutely puts on a clinic in this game gg gets called and shit down we'll have no choice but to tap out